The Earth is getting warmer because of human-caused climate change. Record or near record heat globally is becoming an every year event. It's affecting the way we live and the air we breathe. Everything that we care about, everyone that we care about is going to be affected by this problem. And it's forcing people in Wisconsin to adapt. If we want to want to survive, this is what we have to look at doing. Tonight, the work in Wisconsin to address climate change. We just need to be talking about it and to treat it like the important issue, an urgent issue that it is and the way our state is turning to clean energy. It's here, it's here to stay, and it's, it's the future of energy. We've got you covered on the steps Wisconsin is taking in hopes of solving our climate crisis. We are in a climate crisis, and over the next 30 minutes, we're going to look more closely at how our warming world is affecting us here in Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brandon Taylor. And I'm Amber Noggle. 27 Storm Track Senior Chief Meteorologist Bob Lynn Meyer is with us. Bob, this is an issue you have studied for years. It is one you are passionate about. It is one you are worried about. Worried and concerned, Amber. Over the years, climate scientists have become increasingly concerned about the damage being done by our warming climate. Our average annual temperature has risen significantly since 1970. While the national average has gone up 2.6 degrees Fahrenheit, it's even warmer here. Temperatures have gone up almost 3 degrees in the state and more than 3 degrees in Madison. Winter is the fastest warming season, and the impact of that warming was evident in Madison. This winter, Lakes Mendota and Monona only froze over for 44 days. That's the shortest period of ice cover on record for Monona and the second shortest for Mendota. Our warming climate is making Wisconsin wetter. Every one degree increase in annual temperature results in 4% more water vapor in the atmosphere. This additional water vapor results in more frequent and heavier rain events. Our warming climate is supercharging the atmosphere, causing more frequent and extreme weather events. Here in Wisconsin, climate change is contributing to catastrophic flooding, extreme drought, and devastating tornadoes. 27 Storm Track meteorologist Alexis Clemens spoke with a state climatologist about the shift we're seeing in Wisconsin and what could happen if we don't act now. We've all said it at one time or another while living in Wisconsin. If you don't like the weather, Wait five minutes and it'll change. But now data shows that it's changing too rapidly. Within just the last 10 years, our region has dealt with a number of weather extremes. The flooding of 2018, the cold spell of 2019, the February 2024 tornadoes. Plus, we just experienced the warmest winter on record in southern Wisconsin. And we haven't been shy with record breaking these last few years. We know that the last two full decades, starting in the in year 2000, have been the warmest on record in Wisconsin, and we know that the 20 teens was the wettest decade on record in Wisconsin. The concern is that now record or near record heat globally is becoming an every year event. Uh, the last 10 years have been the warmest 10 on record. Now here's how this domino effect works. Carbon emissions are leading to the warming of our planet. Now when our atmosphere warms, it's going to be able to hold a lot more moisture. Now this can lead to heavy precipitation and more extreme weather events, which we are now seeing in more abundance. Like we had in August of 2018, uh, it's incredible that we had nearly a foot of rain in one day around here. That's almost inconceivable. Those are hurricane-like amounts. Data Steve showed me from the University of Maryland said that if our carbon emissions do not change by 2080, Madison's climate will feel more like today's climate near Kansas City, Missouri, much warmer and wetter. Now, if we reduce our emissions now, our climate by 2080 would still change slightly. It would be similar to today's climate near Champaign, Illinois, just a little warmer and wetter. Over time, if we don't change our, our ways, it'll just that, that climate analog will just keep shifting south. Steve suggests in order to solve our climate crisis, we need to mitigate and adapt. Reporting in Madison, I'm meteorologist Alexis Clemens. Most of our warming is human caused from the emission of greenhouse gases. These gases absorb energy and act like a blanket, keeping the earth warmer than it would normally be. Most greenhouse gas emissions come from the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. We burn those fossil fuels in a variety of ways, in our cars, ships, and planes, to power our homes and businesses, and as part of the process to make new products. We also get greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. Since that is a major industry in Wisconsin, 
our state is part of the problem. But 27 Storm Track Chief Meteorologist Cameron Hopman shows us as farmers here adapt to our changing climate, they're also part of the solution. When you think about the causes of human driven climate change, you may not picture this. The EPA reports human driven methane production contributes more than 15% of greenhouse gases globally. More than 30% of that comes from manure and the rumination of livestock. Wisconsin is home to 3.5 million cattle. Crave Brothers Farm outside Waterloo has about 2,000. Founder George Crave recognizes the problem. We've always looked at that really big picture. Where's our society going to be in 10, 15, 20 years from now? The farm takes the waste its cattle and cheese factory produces and runs it through digesters. The two tanks then produce methane gas that is highly combustible natural gas that generates enough electricity to power our farm, the cheese factory, and 300 homes in our community. While Crave Brothers Farm isn't the only dairy operation in the state of Wisconsin to have its own operational digesters, Dane County in particular remains at the forefront with two digester sites in Wanakee and Middleton. Um, we get cleaner lakes, we help reduce um, the impact of, of methane and, and it's part of our overall you know, work you know, to try to fight climate change. In 2023, both the Wanakee and Middleton digesters processed 124.5 million gallons of manure. And while these digesters are able to take that methane and other byproduct from that animal waste and put it to good use, it's only part of the issue. More than 90% of the methane dairy cows produce is released into the atmosphere through their burps. UW's Blaine Dairy Cattle Research Center is trying to figure out which cows produce the most methane. Nowadays, we do not have the genetic tools to breed for less methane emissions. So one of our goals is actually to develop those tools so in the near future, farmers can breed cows for less methane. The same as we do today for milk production. Reporting in Dane, Jefferson and Columbia counties, I'm Chief Meteorologist Cameron Hopman. As global air temperatures continue to climb, so do our water temperatures. 27 Storm Track meteorologist Blaze Keller has you covered on the implications of those rising temperatures on one of the state's most precious natural resources. The lake may be a place you go to unwind and relax. But underneath the water surface, a complex yet delicate ecosystem can be found. There are lots of different animals and plants that are uh, living in these lakes. And on top of that, you also have the hydrology of the lake itself, right? The types of nutrients that are in the lake that are feeding that plant growth and might be feeding animals as well. The temperature of the lake can determine what animals and plants can live there. And it's all uh, kind of working together in harmony. And this harmonious balance is being threatened. You can think of temperature as a, a master variable for how a lake functions. So increases in temperature, um, are a significant concern. A 2016 study found most of Wisconsin's lakes have been warming since the 1980s. We have half a degree to a degree Celsius, which is, you know, a couple of degrees Fahrenheit uh, per decade. A small number that's already had big impacts on cold water fish like walleye and Lake Herring. We're projected to lose maybe 80% of those populations of Cisco. Other species like brook trout, which is their only native stream trout, really like cold water. We're projected to lose maybe two thirds of our brook trout habitat due to climate change. These impacts go beyond reducing just cold water fish populations. We could see bigger and more unpredictable swings in uh, lake levels themselves, more algae blooms. Warmer temperatures can also lead to more thing, things like fish kills. So you get water that's simply too hot, can't hold enough oxygen, it stresses fishes out and they die. Lakes in northern Wisconsin may experience shorter time with ice, while lakes in southern Wisconsin may see winters with no ice at all. Zach's advice for those looking to help out our lakes is simple. Help them adapt. You can think about things that are, are under your control and that you can change. Maybe you do some things to protect spawning habitat for walleye, or you do things to prevent more nutrient runoff into the lake. Reporting in Monona Bay, I'm meteorologist Blaze Keller. People in Wisconsin are adapting to those swings in lake levels and flooding along our rivers. After severe flooding in August of 2018, the city of Madison started studying watersheds across the city. Engineers are trying to figure out why certain areas ended up with high water. And we diagnose why this is occurring. And once now that you know the why, you can start putting together solutions that will mitigate that. 
Engineers will use the information to upgrade the stormwater systems, the pipes, ponds, and greenways to reduce the risk of future flooding. Flood mitigation is another adaptation. Severe flooding in 2008 and 2018 left much of the village of Rock Springs in Sauk County underwater. The village of less than 500 people lost nearly 30 homes. Many people who lived in those homes left town. Village leaders chose to move the village hall and other buildings to higher ground. So tied into your community and you don't want to see things change. But at the same time, you realize that things have to change. You, if you want to survive as a community, you got to start thinking out of the box. After that relocation, the village is trying to expand. There's a new housing development on higher ground and a new apartment complex with the hope of attracting people back to Rock Springs. We're just getting started. Still ahead, the impact on your health. What climate change means for disease spreading bugs like mosquitoes and ticks. And our warming climate leads to more pollution in the air. The tangible and sometimes irreversible health consequences that can have. And what we can do to protect our air quality.